Hello and welcome to the Friday, September 8th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from London, England. Apple today released updates for macOS, iOS, iPadOS, as well as watchOS, fixing two vulnerabilities, both of which are already exploited in the wild. The first one, CVE 2023-41061. Interestingly, a validation issue in the wallet framework. It could be exploited via a crafted attachment and lead to arbitrary code execution. The second vulnerability is affecting the image IO framework. It's a buffer overflow also leading to a code execution. The image IO vulnerability, according to the Apple announcement, was discovered by the Citizen Lab at the University of Toronto. The Citizen Lab has in the past discovered similar vulnerabilities that were usually then linked to commercial spyware being used by governments to spy on activists. At this point, I don't see any details about this vulnerability on the Citizen Lab website. And sticking with Apple here for another story, I ran into some, well, not sure if I should call it scareware or fleeceware earlier today. The way it was advertised was by tagging users on Facebook. And then of course, these users' friends will also see the respective messages. It was a fairly deceptive message, really sort of just clickbait, saying that, well, someone has passed away. The link then led to your standard scareware page, basically claiming that you are infected with malware. The software itself was essentially a VPN product for iOS. And interestingly, it was in the App Store, so it did pass Apple's review. I did install it briefly. It does appear to contain some VPN functionality. Didn't really have time to dive into it deeper. If it's just a VPN with some adware protection, well, for that it is actually a rather expensive, starting at about $8 a week. And as far as categorizing this particular software goes, Fleeceware usually refers to software that charges rather high subscription fees for basically not much functionality. While Scareware is really any software that uses these fake infection messages in order to scare users into installing it. I guess this particular software sort of falls in both categories. Then we got updates from Aruba affecting the 9200, 9000 series controllers. There are really sort of three vulnerabilities. Two of them are buffer overflows, and then there is a hardware root of trust bypass. Neither one of these vulnerabilities is terribly easy to exploit. The first, the buffer overflow would allow an attacker to execute code early in the boot sequence. So uh, during uh, the system booting up, the root of trust bypass also is sort of a secure boot bypass. So again, requires a reboot of the system. Also, the attacker already needs to have shell access to the device. Aruba recommends, that's always a good recommendation to not expose the shell to the public internet. Verse in comparison are vulnerabilities that uh, were discovered in equipment from TP-Link, in particular the Archer series of routers. There's a whole set of vulnerabilities, I think 13 if I counted correctly all together, and they include, uh, for example, OS command injections, hard-coded credentials, improper authentication, stack-based buffer overflow. So your typical set of IoT and sort of router style vulnerabilities. Firmware updates are available. Remember again, once a month, at least uh, double check if you have the current firmware for whatever router you're using. Also double check if your particular router is still supported. In this case, there are a couple of listed devices for which no more updates are available. 
Well, and that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again on Monday.